Hmm. Yeah, Roblox is kind of dry now. Don't really see what to do. Shop box. What the hell is that? Looks like a remaster. I heard the soundtrack was good. Are they still making piggy clones? That's crazy. Uh, fuck. Um. All right. Well, that's fun. This new icon is. Just No, it can't be. What is it? Fuck. No. 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 Shit. Shit. Oh my god, let me see. Let me see. Come on, come on, come on. No. Right here, right here. Yes, yes, fuck, yes. So apparently whoever controls the fate of the universe really doesn't like the fact that I'm trying extra hard to be lazy because I'm actually amounting to things in my life for once outside of YouTube. And Rolf just randomly drops this big fat summer update that probably a lot of people asked for. I don't know, I was kind of going away from TC2 at this time and then Rolf was like, nuh uh, -uh. So here I am. I'm kind of being forced to make this video. I'm currently recording my voice lines at 12 in the morning now just to get this video out and hopefully it doesn't flop. So to prevent that from happening, let's actually review the summer stuff now. Make personal melee weapon stereotypes already. I played the fifth. For starters, let's talk about not my favorite thing that was added in this update. We'll get to that later, but probably the number one thing that caught most people's eyes. Taunts. Yep, they kind of had to do this eventually. They finally added new taunts into the game. Granted, it's not a lot of them, but you know, it's the summer update. We'll take what we can get. We got one brand new taunt for medic, mechanic, trooper, and an all-class one. And take a wild guess which one that is. Yep, they finally added the conga in the game, and it being an actual partner taunt actually isn't the most surprising thing about this. The more surprising thing is the fact that it's a partner taunt with both your own team and the enemy team, which really surprised me considering how anti-friendly Rolf is with this game. I feel like Rolf understood that there would very obviously be a riot if it wasn't compatible with the other team, so they kinda had to do this whether they wanted to or not. The one issue that people would maybe have with these are the prices. They're a little... Yeah, I guess it kind of makes sense on how TC2 is kind of following TF2's footprints in this case, on how the more cosmetic things are expensive, and the things that actually matter in gameplay are pretty cheap. Speaking of prices, let's go over to a little more controversial add-on in the summer update. So Rolf thought it would be a good idea to add this VIP Game Pass thing to the game. I don't entirely understand it since the update just came out, but I guess I'll get to learn more about it when my monthly Robux comes in. I mean, from the looks of it, it's not terrible. I mean, I might as well check the price while I'm at it. Oh. Yeah, to add on to that little green button there that needs no explanation, there's one more thing about this VIP pass that can come off as a little controversial. One thing that some people might be confused about is that VIP servers were recently disabled for TC2, most likely to make up for community servers in the game now. Yeah, I think the idea of community servers in TC2 is just ever so slightly less ridiculous than the idea of an MVM mode in the game, but from the sound of it and from what I'm seeing so far, I'm assuming this is probably just a more advanced version of VIP servers. And because community servers exist, there's no reason to have VIP servers in the first place. <laughs> and you thought I was defending the VIP. Now, I'm not really the kind of guy who's quick to being judgmental about things, so I'm not gonna completely go off on the VIP because, again, I don't entirely understand it. I guess one thing that isn't terrible is that the base game of TC2 without the VIP is still great, you know? Not all of these summer changes completely revolve around the VIP, so it's not like you need this pass to play the game like pretty much every modern Roblox anime simulator. Kill you first. Uh, anyway, I think we should give the VIP pass sort of a chance. It doesn't look terrible. You don't have to have it to enjoy the full game. And with the exception of cosmetics and a fun little icon next to your name in the chat, it doesn't really add anything to the base game as a whole. It just 
add stuff alongside it. I guess maybe if they add some like new taunts that are exclusive to VIP or some new weapon reskins, then maybe we would have some sort of a debate. But before we give Rove any ideas, let's move on. After this next thing, everything else I'm gonna talk about is gonna go kind of quickly. I'm not saying that as in everything else that was added in the update isn't as cool. Trust me, there are some pretty freaking cool stuff I haven't talked about yet. But this one thing in particular, I just... I need a moment. I'm talking about the source movement system. For those of you who don't already know, TC2 is based off of the game TF2, which runs on Source Engine. This is the engine that pretty much every Valve game runs on, so almost everything like surfing, air strafing, bee hopping, all that good stuff, it kinda came from here. TC2's engine used to replicate the typical Roblox engine. Not really interesting, and some mechanics like rocket jumping and strafing were heavily flawed and really clunky to control because of the engine, but this update changed everything. This pretty much updated the TC2 engine to replicate the Source engine. So, for example, if you jump in one direction and then look in another, what the TC2 original engine would do was have you go in that new direction now, so pretty much it's like automatic strafing. But the Source engine keeps you moving in that same direction regardless if you move or not. And there's a whole bunch of other weird stuff that I don't even think Valve themselves understand. So that might not seem super interesting, but it is a huge game changer for one specific subclass, Trollger. I'm gonna be honest, I've never been as motivated to play full-on Trollger in TC2 until now. I think I've actually been hitting gardens more consistently in this engine than I have in TC2's old engine. So while the direct stats of the Market Gardener haven't changed, this Source Engine update is a huge game changer for Trolldering, and I seriously totally recommend that some of you try it out now because it has never been this fun. Speaking of game changes, let's go over weapons. There were two new weapons added to the game and three balance changes for already existing weapons. Firstly, there's a new marksman secondary, the AE-50. It's sort of like a dumbed down revolver. It mini crits on headshot, is 30% more accurate, has a 15% damage penalty, and 20% slower firing speed. I don't play marksman all that much, so I don't really understand how you would competently use this weapon, nor do I understand whether it's actually good or not, but I guess I'll let the rest of the minorities figure it out. And the other new weapon that was added is a primary for Trooper, and it's actually not a rocket launcher. It's like a bulletproof vest that gives you more damage resistance and faster reload speed on your secondaries, so I guess it's good if you want to play a troll trooper but not troll jur for some reason, because why wouldn't you want to at this state of the game? It's not bad, it's a pretty neat idea. I I respect it. Onto balance changes, the Maverick was nerfed, which is really nice. I guess the weapon can no longer be seen as a crutch because it has a damage penalty and overall slower firing speed. But one really weird unique stat is that it has a faster fire rate when you're either buffed or debuffed. I don't get the exact intent behind this, but whatever, the damage penalty works for me. The quick draw also seems to be nerfed. I think originally you were able to deal mini crits on full meter for 4 seconds, but now it's changed to 2. One thing I do really like though is the 33% refill on primary meter on kill, which I'm assuming will also count while the weapon is mini critted, so if you chain kills together you can stay mini critted for a while. I actually do really like this new take to the quick draw. I don't personally use it, but the times that I have it hasn't really been that interesting. The most I've ever gotten is maybe get a few stabs on my friends and then go for mini crits and it just doesn't work. I probably won't be any better with this, but I guess I just won't play Agent then. The Gut Buster had some new changes. You now start off with minus 25 health on wearer, but you get increased speed and health for every kill you get with the weapon. The idea of mini critting against your sentry's target is still there, and it still also mini crits when it would normally crit. I don't play mechanic a lot, so I can't really tell if this is a huge nerf or a huge buff, but I'll let you guys think about that one. Really quickly, let's move on to the new hats. I'm not going to be talking about each hat individually because I just really don't feel like it, but overall, the new selection of hats looks pretty sick. Some of them seem like to be a little bit of a lackluster, but I'm not complaining too much. Reverse bosses also got a major update. They added some new bosses and I haven't personally tried it out, but from what I've heard, the gameplay is actually pretty different. Multiple bosses can be in one round, which was only originally a thing for King Abrex and the pirate guy. I don't know, I forgot his name. But now the boss's health depends on how many bosses are actually in that round. Again, I haven't tried it myself, but sounds pretty neat. Five. 
technically six new maps were added to the game. Three control point, Yellow Valley, pretty nice. Himalaya looks pretty fun. Rooftop is finished. This is the only new map that I actually got to play for multiple rounds, and it's honestly pretty nice. Beautiful, 10 out of 10. Liftoff isn't terrible. I don't know, I haven't really played it that many times. And Shiver Rift has nice atmosphere, and it was also created by Camo Camper, so that's fun. They also brought back a really old payload map, Calamity. I am undeniably nostalgic for this map, and Rolf just had to remind me of back in the day when I was like maybe level 10-ish. Whether the map is actually good or not, I'm, I'm not gonna get into that. The new character UI for the inventory is really sick. The new character icons are of much higher quality, although Annihilator just seems a little, I don't know, off to me. I don't know, I guess it's just a personal thing. And the way they laid everything out from the different pages of your inventory to the filter to even your actual loadout screen, it's really nice. Definitely gonna take some getting used to, but overall, great change. Speaking of characters, I found out that Agent's voice actor was actually completely recasted. I don't hate it, but it is gonna take some getting used to, just like the new character UI. There are also some new animations, most notably for Trooper and Brute for their melee weapons. Pretty nice. Brute actually puts the coils on his hand in the animation. And yeah, now let's move on to the lightning round. This is gonna be talking about the other things that aren't huge and I can just go over in a couple seconds. So yeah, let's get on with it. New model for the flare gun, rocket jumper, and liberty launcher. I love the new looks, especially to the liberty launcher. Probably the only nice thing I can say about the weapon. Crates have a different chance of giving certain unusuals on certain times of the year. I've only ever unboxed one unusual, so this doesn't really matter to me. Crates don't give duplicates. Awesome. New control point models look absolutely fire. Huge fan of these. New loading screens look absolutely sick. Huge fan of these. I already talked about the new character portraits. They look fine. Sniper tracers were added back. Probably the least controversial way they could have nerfed sniper. So I'll take what I can get. And finally, Belgium and Netherlands players can now play again. I don't know why they couldn't in the first place, but I guess I've been living under a rock. So that's every new major thing in this summer update. I want to say I would give it a 10 out of 10, but I know not everyone likes everything in this update. So I'm going to give it a 9.5 just for good measure. So yeah, thank you for watching, like and subscribe, all that good shit. And yeah, I guess I'm back now. When's the last time you wiped your ass? It's called Gamer Gunk!